this, boys and girls, is what the fuss is all about. A brand new 2022 Custom 24 Wood Library Artist Package. The closest thing to a private stock without the crazy private stock price tag. Once out of the box, you are greeted with your typical leather-bound Custom 24 case, which feels very sturdy and very heavy. There is that new guitar smell coming on. Time to unpack the beast and see if it's the real deal. I am just about to open the case and there's a few things you should know. It is no secret that I have a love-hate relationship with Paul Reed Smith. Maybe not so much the guitar as the owners, but that's a whole different story. You can go back a few years to my 2017 Custom 24 review. Let's see how this guitar is today compared to what it is intended to be and what it started out as. I'm about to open the case. This is supposed to be a purple iris. I think it's a black on a purple fake kind of a thing, and it's supposed to have a flamed neck. I'm gonna to try to approach this as objective as I can, even though being a musician, that's just about as impossible as it gets. But I will tell you one thing, if for nothing else, this is going to be the most honest feedback you will get. Remember, I'm not a store, nothing I can sell you here, nor am I trying to, nor do I care to, but I promise you one thing, you will get an honest opinion today. And without further ado, I have moved it up here. I closed the middle latch. I'm gonna reopen that because I wanted to have it a little bit closer to the light. No synthetic light today. We wanna see what it will be like if you opened one of these things. Now remember, I don't know what Matt sent me, so let's have a look. me. I seriously think I might have just seen the most beautiful guitar ever made. This did not deserve to be filmed inside a dark, miserable, depressing room, but needed to be outside in the very mother nature it came from. This might be one of the most beautiful book matched maple top I had ever seen. Not a 10 top, a 100 top. I don't know who they bribed or what laws they broke to get this kind of ebony. This might be one of the most intensely flamed mahogany necks I have ever seen in my life. Even the backside of this beauty is pure art. Mahogany at its finest. And then there is that top. My goodness gracious, 4K at 60 frames per second, and it still doesn't do it justice. It is like a Ferrari. You literally have to see it in person to appreciate the color and that book match. It is absolutely mesmerizing. It is an hour later, and it's still one of the most beautiful women I have ever seen. Sadly, this might also be where the honeymoon meets a bitter end, and that ain't helping my hangover. You see, the Custom 24's biggest enemy actually isn't a Les Paul 59 or a Strat. It's actually Paul himself. If you don't remember, he took a Strat and a Les Paul, put the blueprint on top of each other, and that's how he came up with the Custom 24. It was supposed to be the best of both worlds. The problem is, sometimes when you take the best of a Porsche, and the best of a Ferrari, it doesn't automatically guarantee that the car you build out of the two parts is gonna be better. And it gets even worse when you cheap out on what is a $6,000 guitar. I think my Invisalign just popped out when I said that. But let me show you what I'm on about. The radius being at 10 inches is miserable because it's stuck between vintage and modern, but it doesn't accomplish either of the two. 
There's a big reason why modern players aren't playing Paul Reed Smith Custom 24s, and I promise you, it's not because they think the guitar is ugly. You, of course, probably think 10 inches is the best thing ever, but then again, you're probably also a lawyer and not a professional musician. The fact that the guitar isn't nor ever was offered with a flatter or compound radius makes this all the more ridiculous. While the neck might be one of the most beautiful things you and I have ever seen, it is more confused than a man who's in love with his wife's best friend. Pattern thin or pattern regular, it tries too hard to be the best between a Strat and a Les Paul, but accomplishes neither of the two, especially for faster playing combined with a low radius like 10. And if you have a bigger hand, it just doesn't sit right no matter how hard you try. The heel is absolutely atrocious, bigger than a Boeing 747. Remember those old PRSs, how they were? Why they changed it? No idea. Remember those old bird inlays that were power all the way through on the old artist packages? Well, those days are sadly long gone because now the birds are surrounded by high-end plastic. Mind you, on a $6,000 guitar. I'll let you decide which one looked better. Remember that gorgeous, insanely beautiful signature inlay on the artist package from back in the day? Oh, smack, you're getting good at this. You guessed it, it is plastic. And so is the main veneer and also that little truss rod that says custom on it, plastic as well. What exactly is custom about it, I'm not sure. This is actually a regular production guitar. Paul has become shameless about saving money, especially now that most of the guitar is done by CNC machines. The frets are a perfect example. Paul, of course, will have you believe he doesn't put stainless steel frets on this guitar because it affects sound. Well, let me tell you, as a pro player, it affects sound no more than not having them. And if anything, gives a $6,000 guitar a fretboard longevity. Right. Of course, if you want fretboard binding like on a Gibson, you'll have to shove another $7,000, which basically is a private stock order. Oh, and then there are those super ugly mismatched ears, as you call them. But then again, in all honesty, a lot of manufacturers do that to save wood, a cost-saving measure, so you don't cut the whole blank out for the neck. Ugh. It's Saturday morning. I feel like I'm stuck with this super hot chick. But every time she opens her mouth, she sounds like an idiot. Ever met one of those? Well, there might be one saving grace. How does she perform in bed? And we're about to find out. And by the way, I hope my analogies don't offend you. Actually, I don't give a if they do. Remember the part about this being an honest opinion. There's a bunch of stores that will gladly tell you this is the best thing ever. Go buy it, blah, 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 blah. You see, I, however, have expectations for $6,000 and I'm not a badge whore. I'm a guitar whore, but not a badge whore. <sighs> please, please be good in bed. Well, while she's in the shower getting ready, she will get the best of amenities. So very important to understand and for you to know what it is we will be doing. We will use a 59 or a Momstein head, same exact thing. And we have it uh, double wired as you of course know how it's done. And we are using a Royer 121 and a 57, probably the greatest wiring combo. We have a 1936 cap here. However, it has a vintage 30 speakers, not the 1275s that the lead comes with. I replaced those. And another thing you would think would be in the favor of the custom 24. And of course, our pedal board, We'll just use some basic reverb delay, no modulation effects whatsoever, straight into Pro Tools. There'll be no EQing, no mastering, no high or low pass filters. I want you to hear the guitar. Let's give it a fair chance because right now the sound is going to determine if this is a do or die guitar. More importantly, if it's a $6,000 guitar. <laughs>
honest, the thing sounds actually pretty good. It sounds great for that matter. Nothing wrong with it. The 85, 15 pickups are greatly tuned. They're dialed in. It does have its own identity. Does it do something that a 59 Les Paul doesn't? No, because nothing will do what a 59 does, let alone its history and the music history that's based on it. But it doesn't have to. It does have its own sound. Will it touch a Strat? No. And actually, nothing will touch a Strat except for a Strat. But anyway, the question is, who is playing this? And I still stand by it. The biggest enemy of this guitar, besides Paul, is that it still looks better than it sounds. She still is more beautiful when she keeps her mouth shut. Let me show you what I'm talking about. This is a Harley Davidson Cruiser, one of the most beautiful motorcycles ever created. And yet, no matter how beautiful it is, what do people always talk about when they ride it? They say how it makes them feel free, the smell of nature. No matter how much they talk about the beauty of the bike, they always talk more about how riding it makes them feel. You have never heard somebody say, you know, it was great riding this Harley through Mother Nature on Pacific Coast Highway, yet I think it looks better than it makes me feel. Here we have a Ferrari, an absolute work of art, a masterpiece, one of the most beautiful things ever created by man. Yet, no matter how beautiful it is, the one thing that outdoes the beauty is the engine, the sound of the engine. When have you ever heard somebody say after driving a Ferrari, you know what, I think it looks better than it sounds and then it drives, never. And that's why a Ferrari is so special. No matter how beautiful it is, and everybody thinks it is beautiful, when you drive it, you actually forget about the beauty. Now that is a statement. And then boys and girls, there's practicality. So you're probably screaming right now saying, well, wait a second, my Paul Reed Smith is practical. Is it though? There's two kind of Paul Reed Smith players or two kind of players that play Paul Reed Smith custom 24s, especially the core model, the one that makes you look like you made it. Number one is the lawyer hobby player that plays in the cover band and basically gives the guitar about 10 hours of play per year. And then there's the guy that was me 10 years ago, waiting tables, being very broke, wishing he could have one. And do you really think that once a guy like that spends six thousand dollars on a guitar, he's going to be thrashing it around? Let me show you what I mean. This is a Eric Johnson Stratocaster, one of the greatest player in the history of guitar playing and probably one of the greatest strats, best sounding strats ever made, custom shop level, universally agreed. Obviously, this guitar wasn't good enough for you, nor the player at $2,000. But of course, the Silver Sky that John Mayer plays was good at $3,000. But check this out. Oh, oops. Well, I just made the Strat cooler. This is a coaster. Now, you might say I'm crazy. Am I though? This is a tool, a hammer. And ironically, the more you beat it up and the more you mistreat it, the cooler it becomes. Let me show you something else. This is a six and a half thousand dollar 59 Gibson Les Paul reissue. The guitar that we as Paul Reed Smith players always shit on the most, even though it is the guitar that somehow is the cornerstone of modern music. And check this out. Oh, that's a hard drop. This is a co- oh. This is a co- that Another guitar I just made cooler. Here's the Paul Reed Smith. And trust me, you might think I'm a bad actor. I'm not acting. I actually genuinely, actually am using the coaster to put it down because I, and the microfiber, because I really don't want to scratch it up. Make sure I'm in frame. Okay, it almost slipped, so I'm you know, I'm gonna use these shorts here to put it down and the microfiber here. There you go. Coaster. Yeah. 
<laughs> can't do it, man. I want to so badly, but you see, I've been conditioned and trained that if it has a ding, it's imperfect. And now I'm becoming that PRS owner that has this hot chick and all he's doing is saving it for the next guy. I'm, <laughs> I'm, can't do it. Can't do it. Naturally, you're left thinking now that this is just another review or was another review where Marco, all he did was bash Paul Reed Smith, bash the guitar, bash the brand. Just another hater of Paul Reed Smith, even though I probably used more of them on records than you have and own more of them. But that's besides the point. I can see why you would feel that way, except you are wrong in one thing. You see, I wouldn't buy that 59 if it was only one guitar I could buy. Nor would I actually buy that Strat. And that 59 and that Strat is about as good as it gets in guitar. Nor would I buy that PRS. The guitar I would buy is a Paul Reed Smith. Meet the 1988 Custom 24, built out of steel and dirt. The locking tuners are so complex, nobody ever really understood how they worked. It has what became to be known as a sweet switch, which sucked so bad and did nothing that most owners ended up replacing it for a tone knob. The tuners were about as average quality as it gets, and they were never quite the same on two guitars. The wiring was inconsistent, and changing the sweet switch for a tone knob required rewiring the whole damn thing. The pickups were simply awful, and that is universally agreed upon. Even Paul Reed Smith as a company agrees that the pickups back then were simply shit. Yet, none of it matters. Look at it. It is a masterpiece. It screams passion from top to bottom. You don't even have to be a guitar player to look at it to know that you're looking at something special that was built out of a need to change the game and do something that hadn't been done before. The guitar should be $10,000, not even available for sale. Yet, after a $2,600 price reduction, it cannot even sell for $4,000. This is Paul's 59 Les Paul, and somehow, it is a third of the price than a private stock. But that's not Paul's fault. That's the fault of the arrogance of the PRS owner and player. Well, guys, it's now a week later, and um, I had some time to spend with this thing especially during sound check. I still stand by that it's uh, a great sounding guitar, but sadly, I also stand by all the other stuff I said. Um, my verdict, if you will, people always send me these messages, uh, you know, what would you get over this and that? Uh, I'm sad to say it is still better looking than, than the wow factor of, of, uh, of it the way it makes me feel when I play. I keep coming back to that Ferrari thing. You know, the thing that makes Ferrari so special is that no matter how beautiful it is, when you drive it, the sound is even more beautiful. The way it makes you feel is even more beautiful, you know? And I have, you know, the, uh, the usual suspects here, you know what I mean? Uh, let me see if I'm in frame. I just, um, you know, you can argue is a collection complete without a Paul Reed Smith. And then, you know, you can go back to arguing about the price tag of it, you know, but uh, the other thing, then we're back to this, you know, and uh, <laughs> we covered that already. Uh, obviously, uh, Eric Johnson and his $2,000 Strat is uh, with a 12 inch radius, nonetheless, uh, won't do for you, but uh, John Mayer's Strat will, or sorry, Strat copy will. So, um, you know, and, and listen, guys, uh, for you that don't know uh, and that, you know, haven't seen any of my other reviews, I know you're going to think this is a Paul Reed Smith bashing because there's a lot of videos out there bashing Paul Reed Smith just for the sake of bashing them. Or, you know, they're still number three in selling. Well, you know, they are on paper. I mean, 
Trust me, Paul would love nothing more than to sell the amount of guitars that Gibson and, and Fender sells. Trust me, he, he'd go and buy more CNC machines. But you know, Gibson selling a thousand guitars a day and Fender selling 2000 guitars a day and then Paul selling 20 guitars a day. Yeah, sure, that makes him number three, but uh, you got always, I learned the hard way, look beyond the numbers. This is a drop dead gorgeous instrument. Oh, back to my point. You know, before you think this, this you know, this is just bad mouthing it, uh, I will say this to you. Um, you know, here's a clip of me actually having and playing a custom 24 in a music video. Check this out. a video of me actually playing it live okay this is also not a trampus green that I'm actually abusing live So before you say that, uh, before you just say that I'm shitting on them, just keep in mind I actually have Paul Reed Smith custom 24s or Paul Reed Smith guitars with buckle rash on it. It's a drop dead gorgeous instrument. This particular uh, custom 24 is probably one of the most beautiful guitars I've ever seen. I mean, look at this. But um, you know, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a, a, a tool for a working man. Uh, Paul, well, he stopped saying that because there's no fucking working man out there who can afford a $6,000 guitar. And if they do, the last thing they're going to do is abuse them. So I'm sad to say I come back to, uh, well, you know, you know what's funny? Here's the funny thing. This is uh, 1800 bucks out the door and this was four grand out the door. This is the new ones with the Ebony again. But again, you can get them obviously less used. But since we're comparing apples to apples with respect to pricing, so you have two grand and four grand, six grand, you have the same, oh my God, I didn't even think of this. You have the same price as the, as the custom 24. Wow, I didn't even think of this. So these two actually cost the same as this one, but you get that and that. And now ask yourself, where do you get more? for your money. Wow, I didn't even think of that. Wow, these two cost exactly the same as that one. And here you have a Les Paul Custom and one of the greatest strats ever made. But it doesn't matter. The Paul Reed Smith guy still has got to have that signature on the headstock, isn't it? So that's all right, I used to be that guy. Anyway, I'll leave you with my last video, with my latest video, uh, Living for Nothing, little sh shameless self-promotion. Um, and for nothing else, you know, I hope you, uh, like I said in the beginning, dug the honesty about this. Stay safe. Uh, glad we don't do masks anymore. Love you all. See you on the next video.